Well, why don't you turn your Bibles to the book of James. So if uh, you're new to, uh, with us this morning, we're going through a sermon series in the book of James, chapter 1, and uh, it's the sermon series titled, Faith Changes Everything. If you don't know where James is, go to the end of your Bible and you'll find Hebrews probably, and then after Hebrews is this small book, James, that's where we're going to be. And so we're in James chapter 1 this morning. Anyone need a Bible as we turn there that maybe forgot their Bible or need one? We can get one to you. Anyone else need a Bible? All right, turn your Bibles to James chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 9 to 11. And so again, let me read it aloud if you'd follow along in your copy of God's Word. The Word of the Lord. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, and the rich in his humiliation, because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises in its scorching heat, uh, with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Let's pray together and then we'll dive in. Pray with me. Father, Lord, we humbly again come to you and we thank you for this great privilege, Lord, of having our Bibles open and being able to hear from you, God, and we do not need to hear from me. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me, that you would help me, Lord, fill me with your spirit, that I would make much of Christ, that I would make clear the word of God, your word, and that we as a church would see what our God says, and Lord, that we would not just be hearers, but doers then. And Father, we just know that uh, even as the book of James says, faith changes everything. So this morning, Lord, as we look at the rich and the poor, Father, would you apply your word? Lord, would you help us to understand it? Would you help us give us eyes to see what you say? And so, Father, would you change us? And would you be glorified in it? And we ask it, Lord, in faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. The sermon today is entitled, Riches worth boasting in. Riches worth boasting in. I don't know if uh, any of you are familiar, familiar with any rich people. Maybe some of you this morning would say, well, that's me. I don't know. Uh, one of the richest people in the world is Elon Musk, apparently. Maybe you've heard of him. Apparently he's worth net worth over $200 billion, whatever that means. My question this morning is with, maybe you've heard of Elon Musk, probably I could say a show of hands, we don't need to do that, but I'm guessing someone has heard of him. I wonder if you've heard of the poorest person in the world. You know, that's kind of tongue in cheek because, of course, you haven't, and the question is like, well, who is that? We think about riches and we think about poverty, what do we consider? Well, this morning, again, maybe you consider yourself rich. Maybe you consider yourself poor or maybe somewhere in between. And likely, probably most of us would be like, well, I think I'm probably somewhere in between. If you're rich, I would say even this, maybe you're just in a season of experiencing riches to some level. You know, and if that's the case, maybe for you, maybe even now, it's, it's a matter of something that you got this time of year, maybe a tax return, uh, maybe a gift, uh, maybe a raise at work, or maybe you're in a season of poverty, maybe you lost your job, so maybe you wouldn't consider yourself poor, but maybe you're in a season of poverty, I think this still applies then to you, you'd say, well, actually today I'm poor, I lost my job. Maybe you look around at the prices and the increase in prices on everything, and you say, uh, yeah, I think I'm considered poor. In either position, rich or poor, and we're going to fall in both of those positions, uh, maybe one for a longer season than the other, maybe we're in between, but in both of those positions, ultimately, we land in one, we're commanded to boast. We see that in the text. We're actually commanded to boast, whether you're rich or poor, boast. And the idea of boasting is not bragging, not, not hey, look at me, which wouldn't it seem weird anyhow for someone who's poor to, to boast? Like, what, what does it mean to boast? Well, boasting is, is not bragging in s- sort of self. It's, it's declaring and taking pride in something that's good and right. I'll, I'll boast in that. I'll, I'll take pride in that. 
Yeah, that's worth celebrating. So we think about boasting for the rich. Maybe it would look something like, look at all the money I've saved. And it's not wrong to save, of course. Uh, maybe look how we were good stewards of our money. You could say, well, that's, that's, that's right in a sense to, to take pride in that, that you were good with your money or wise or, or look how maybe generous you are in it. Maybe for the poor then, like what would it look like to boast? Well, maybe it would look like paying off debt. Hey, look, we're poor, but we're, we're slowly paying some of that deficit off. Or maybe that you got some sort of a, a break of some sort. We finally got a break or you, you found a sale in the store. Again, it's not wrong to boast. It's not wrong to boast in those things. But I want you to see, and, and I want you to see in this passage, and what we see in James, again, faith changes everything. It's not wrong to boast in those things. But as believers, we boast in something far greater than those things. You see, if being rich, you boast in what I just mentioned, or poor, you kind of boast in like, well, it seems to be trending this way. Both of that is a focus on earthly treasure. Both of that's not wrong, but it's weak. It's weak. And more importantly, it is not what we're commanded to boast in in this text. So don't not do it because it's weak. In fact, you can, you can do that, but we're commanded actually to boast in something different. Do it, boast in something different, and we'll get to that. Faith changes everything. And so the question then is, are you boasting in better riches? Are you actually boasting in better riches? Not just riches, but better riches. And so we have three points this morning, and the first is this. To answer the question, point one, the poor boast in their riches. The poor boast in their riches. Look at verse 9, he says, Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. Let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation. Lowly means like low degree. Humble means humble circumstances. Maybe that's you this morning. We're not given a description further than that. And it's kind of like assume that we'll know. We are told lowly, and, and again, like lowly means, humble means, but verse 10, if you look ahead to verse 10, gives us, I think, a pretty good picture of, well, it's likely, yes, speaking of being lowly, for sure, but particularly to do with, I think, finances, because we see about the rich brother in verse 10. So the question then, are you lowly? Are you lowly, or are you in like a season of lowliness? Would that be describing you today? How can you boast then in your exaltation? Isn't the definition of being lowly that you haven't been exalted? Right? Think about that. You're, you're, the lowly is, is called to boast in their exaltation. But the definition of being lowly is you don't have anything to boast about. So how do you do that? Do you just kind of like, well, and you just sort of make things up? I guess kind of I'm sort of exalted because, like, no, no, you're actually lowly, and at the same time, you're to boast in something that apparently you are as well. So again, does this mean then that we, you know, are just waiting kind of like we feel the need in our lowliness, we're waiting for the paycheck, we're waiting kind of in, you know, maybe like, can I just get a break, a holiday, uh, waiting for something to come our way, and maybe when it does, there it is, there's the exaltation, Right? We're given, someone makes us a meal. We're given a gift card. Uh, we find a deal. I know some of our ladies, I know some of them, my wife was, was at a secondhand store, or a whole bunch of them. They went thrifting, it's called. Maybe you've done that before. You know, and it's like, oh, the exaltation is I found this great deal. Like, I'm kind of lowly, but look what I found, and it's worth so much, and, and here's this. The idea being something's lifted you up higher than where you were before. And again, it's right to celebrate those things and give God even glory for those things. That's right. But again, that's not what we're being commanded to boast about here, just so you know. Notice who's commanded again, and you can see it there, to be boasting. It's the lowly, that is, the poor in this life. 
They're poor. In this life, in a sense, waiting to be exalted, you would think. The things just kind of just out of their reach. And notice as well what the command is. Again, it's for the poor, and this is so important to see. It's for the poor to boast because they are exalted. Not just, hey, I got some exaltation. Look what I found at the thrift store. It's, no, 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 I am. I'm lowly, but I am, and I will boast in that. Well, how's that possible? How is that possible? Well, again, our series, Faith Changes Everything. If you were a brother or sister in the Lord, and very plainly we're told this is speaking to a brother, someone who is in Christ, then this is what you can boast in. You have been brought out of your low state. You had nothing. You came to the Lord with nothing, and in fact, a deficit, a debt, the the weight of your sin before a holy God, your sin. You as a sinner, that's what you brought to the Lord. It doesn't get any more lowly than that. And God exalted you. He, with this infinite debt before a holy God, he offers you the clearing of your debt. Christ paid the debt, took on hell for eternity, that it would be paid in full, and then credits your account full. Righteousness of God. Not like you still need a couple more bucks. It's done. It's complete. It's eternal. Not lacking at all. And so he's exalted the person who is in debt and given them great riches. The righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 8 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know it. Do you know it this morning? That though he was rich... This is Christ. He's the rich one. Yet for our sake, he became poor. Why would he become poor? Why would he take on our debt, become sin for us? Because that's who we are. We're in debt. He became poor, lowly, so that by his poverty, we might become rich. That's incredible. So, so the lowly, the reality is lowly in this life, and yet he says, boast in your exaltation. And this is what he is talking about. And how often do we think of this? I get so stuck again. We talked about trials before and just tunnel vision. I get so stuck in the lowliness of my position and forget in boasting of Not making something up, but boasting in, not something small, but boasting in proper exaltation, who I am in Christ. So my question for you and I this morning is, are you boasting in better riches? Or are you finding yourself in a lowly position and you're just waiting for just please, just some exaltation, just that next thing. You're just, you're waiting for something where you can finally take pride in something. You may always be called lowly in this life, but we are always commanded to boast in our exaltation. We are rich in God. We are rich in God. And man, don't we want to be exalted in this life and also boast in our exaltation in Christ? Like, don't, we, don't we just want that? We're like, yeah, yeah, exalted in Christ, but man, it sure would be nice to get out of this hole that I'm in. But he doesn't say that. He says, The exaltation is so great. Sometimes, even, the hole that you're in is a great illustration to stir your heart to boast in like, but I am rich and exalted. So then again, the question is like, well, if you're going to boast about your riches, your exaltation, do you believe it? And this goes for for the kids. This goes for each and every one of you. Do you actually believe you're rich? Do you know that you are rich. Do you think about that? In your lowly state, in your vehicle broken down on the side of the road, are you like, I am rich? Do you think of it? Do you actually believe it? Because you can be commanded this, and if you don't believe it, it's just like, man, I guess I should probably talk about that more, who I am in Christ. I think it's a little bit maybe to illustrate it, and this, this illustration falls short in so many ways, but you know, a poor person who is poor, they have nothing, and they find out that they're part of a royal line. Maybe Vicky from England, they're part of Queen Elizabeth, that line. And they say, I, I'm part of that. 
And, and they're, they're poor, but they find that out, and now they have something to boast about. They're still poor, but they realize, like, wow, things are going to change. And, and they're, they have something now to brag about. You talk to that poor person before that moment and say, hey, you should, you should boast about being rich. They'd be like, what are you talking about? I, I, I guess, well, maybe, I guess I kind of have stuff, and this, this plate I have is okay. No, no, boast in it because you believe it, and it's true. We are rich. We have Christ. And so while we're poor, it would seem especially wise. And we just looked at wisdom, the context of verses before this. Wisdom would say, boast in it, in your exaltation, while you are lowly. While that's the case. Whether that's a season, or whether you'd be like, the season seems like from birth. It doesn't seem like I've got out of that season. Whatever it is. But in that time that you would boast in your exaltation. So are you boasting in better riches? The poor boast in riches, and then secondly, the rich boast in poverty. The rich boast in their poverty. Again, poor, the poor brother is going to boast in his riches, and then verse 10 says, and the rich. He doesn't say the rich brother, but I I don't think he has to. I believe he's speaking about the rich brother because he's just spoken of um, the poor brother. So I believe he's speaking of now the rich brother, for the reason of context, the flow, but then also because of what he tells him to do. He commands the rich to boast in his humiliation. I do not believe you can actually tell a rich person who is not in Christ to do that. I believe he's speaking to someone who is a brother who is rich in this life, and he's telling him to boast in his humiliation. Who are the rich? The rich are those who have abundance. It's, it's interesting. He doesn't give, a, oh, and here's a detailed list of what the rich is or who the rich are, and then if you fall into that list, you'll know you're them. Again, we're not told. It's just assuming. It's this idea of being exalted again, lifted up, that to be rich is really to have abundance amply supplied. Again, the question, so are you rich? And you're like, oh, I'm not really rich, but maybe today you're like, well, actually, I think I probably fit in that category. I don't know what's going on in your life. Are you rich? Maybe that season of, of having abundance, amply supplied. It's interesting that we're commanded to boast in your humiliation. That is, being low and having nothing. So again, you can see, while you are rich, boast in having nothing. But you're rich, and so what does that mean? Is this kind of like, a, you've heard of like rags to riches, it's kind of like a story, oh, it's sort of like the story of rags to riches. So, so this must mean like ideas where you say, well, you know, you've got to spend money to make money. So, you know, let me tell you about the time I spent money and I didn't have anything uh, so that we were able to make some money. You know, we lost a whole lot of time, you know, making some um, humbling mistakes along the way, learned some vest- valuable lessons. But kind of like that, that was like bringing us here. And I would say it's uh, good to admit mistakes. Oh, that's good. It's humbling to be like, <clears throat> we didn't get it all right all the time. That, that's fine and right. But again, that's not what we're being commanded to boast in here. And it's very important that you see that. That is good and right to do. And look where we came from and, and give glory to God. But that's not what he's saying here. He's telling us to boast in the rags themselves while you are rich. You hear that? It's not just a story of rags to riches, so it's really tough. But no one talks about their rags if they're still in rags. They're like, well, let me tell you, we spent a lot of money, and oh, right, we still have no money. You, you, you typically talk about your rags because it brought you to riches. He's saying here, you are rich, talk about your rags. Boast in your rags. Well, that doesn't make any sense. But again, faith changes everything. So if you're a brother or sister in the Lord, the rags that we boast in are infinitely better than something that just brought us to riches in this life. You can say, man, we lost a lot. And you can kind of boast about that. Look where we came. The rags he's talking about here is infinitely better than anything like that ever. While we are rich in this life, I think we, we have a sense of security. 
maybe importance, influence. Maybe you got some followers. Maybe a sense of control. And within that, and this is why there's so many warnings about being rich in this life. Not that it's wrong, but there's so many warnings in it because in that, to be able to boast about your humiliation is very difficult sometimes because we don't feel it and we forget and we forget the gospel. It says, I have nothing. I have absolutely nothing. And knowing it so that when you are rich, you're bragging about that. Let me tell you, I have nothing. How do we do that? Again, by grace. And we're going to close in a song. Uh, other people have sang it. I think it was written by the Gettys, Keith and Christine Getty. I think it's on the screen there for you, or should be. Do we have it? I think I put it in there. It's coming. There it is. My worth is not in what I own. And again, we're going to close in this song. I think it's fitting for us to close just the one or a couple lines from that song. It says, two wonders here that I confess. And we, we've sang this as a church before. So, so I hope like you know what you're singing. There's these two wonders, and I confess them, my worth and my unworthiness. My value fixed, my ransom paid at the cross. How is it that, that I am so unworthy, yet called worthy? The, the idea is, is that I have nothing to offer the Lord. I am unworthy, no matter how rich you are in this life. The wonder is you actually have nothing. And so the rich person is called to remember that and boast. And I have nothing. You have to understand all the things around me, I have nothing. And if anything, they just would illustrate how foolish and temporal and fleeting and fading they are. We are called worthy only because of Christ. So within our riches, again, we'll brag that we have nothing. So again, a question for us, are you boasting in your humiliation? Are you actually doing that? Like, like taking pride in the fact that you have nothing. Do people hear you talk about that? And I would say again in a season of, or maybe you, you are well off. I don't know. You consider yourself rich, not poor. Are you doing that? Are you thinking it? Because if you're thinking it, then... And, and believing it out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth will speak. So then the question is, how do you view yourself? As a kid, and this is funny, this happened not too long ago. Some of the guys had put out a loony on the floor, and I found it. And then I pocketed it, and I didn't realize that it was a loony. So one of the kids could find it, be all excited, they found a loony. It's a big deal. That's 100 pennies, just so you know. That's math again. I'm going to give you some more math. Just so you know, if you listened during last week's sermon, the math was wrong. It doesn't check out. But the illustration hopefully lasted. <laughs> you don't need much time to read a lot of books in the year. Okay? Here's the math. For a kid, if I found a loony, it would have been a dollar bill back when I was a kid anyhow. If I'd have found a penny, I was excited. Look, I found a penny. Now, if you find a penny as a kid, that's always, I, even, as, even now I see a penny, I'm like, hey, that's a penny. That's, I don't know why. It's just like, that's cool. It's free money, right? You're excited about the penny. And you say, like, look, I found a penny. But if you found out that your father had an inheritance for you, and here's the math, that was worth one billion pennies, that is $10 million, your boast would change, and your boast would be like, hey, look at this penny. This is nothing. This is nothing. I have nothing. It's just, it's, it's that humiliation of like, I have a billion pennies coming my way. This is laughable. Now it changes how you boast what you take pride in. It's just a penny. It's nothing. So, do you boast in your humiliation in light of what you have? Boasting in our poverty is not this as well. It's not downplaying like, well, I guess. I mean, it's not really that great, you know could be better. That's not boasting in your humiliation. It's rather acknowledging this is nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing to bring to God, so this, this means God must bring it. Okay? I, have, I have nothing to exalt in. Right? God must exalt me. 
I have nothing to add to my life. God must supply it. And the earthly riches I have are nothing. So we're told in that, in riches, than to boast in our humiliation. And that only happens when we think of the gospel. I have to think in light of the gospel. And again, the warning, it is so easy for us. And I would say, short of the Holy Spirit and remembering from the word of God, we will forget and look at our riches and at best be like, well, I mean, it's not so, that's not boasting in your humiliation. It's like, this is foolishness. Let me tell you about who, who I have in Christ, of what's coming my way. That's the idea here. And so he goes on. Again, faith changes everything. Are you boasting in better riches? The poor boast in riches. The rich boast in poverty. And then third and finally, both, rich and poor, both, both in, boast in what it lasts. Both boast in what lasts. So he's going to go on here in the text and, and speak now of the rich. He doesn't spend too much time with the poor, but it's interesting now he goes on with the rich, and now he's going to illustrate some things for us to make sure that we get this point. You see, boasting in your humiliation is not just like a good Christian thing to do. It is a command from God, and it is, in a sense, the difference between life and death. That's how urgent it is. Your understanding of this topic is that important. What are you placing your trust in? What are you boasting in? And so verse 10, he says, and listen, he says, this is so important. Why? Because like a flower of the grass, he will pass away. The rich person will pass away. He says, you need to boast in your humiliation. Why? Because you're just like a flower. You'll be gone. You'll pass away. Now, everyone passes away. The poor person passes away. The rich person passes away. So when you read this, it's not like, well, Doesn't everybody pass away? But not everyone passes away like a rich person, like a flower. And that's what he says. He he passes away like a flower. I want to give you a picture of a flower in case you forgot what they look like. Winter is like 11 months of the year in Alberta, right? So this is actually a Saskatchewan. Well, you'll find these in Alberta, but this is Saskatchewan's flower. This is one of my favorite flowers. Certainly wildflowers, this would be like, this would be my favorite flower. Maybe because I grew up in Saskatchewan, so I come by it naturally. This is the western red lily. Of course, in Saskatchewan, we don't call anything by its real name. It's called a tiger lily. Okay, so this is a tiger lily is what we would call it in Saskatchewan. Maybe you're not into flowers. This is the illustration that he gives, though. I'll, I'll say this, because maybe you're like, I've seen that before. And maybe you say, like, that's kind of cool. Like, what... What if this was the first time anyone had ever seen a flower right now? All you've seen is grass up to this point, and you saw a flower. We would be losing our minds, and everyone would be taking pictures right now and then trying to make some money from it. This is incredible. You look at a flower and the beauty of it, and again, you you stumble across this, say, for the first time, and maybe that'll help you get the illustration. There's beauty. It apparently looks like there's strength to it. It's so different than the grass. It stands above and beyond, for sure. It stands, you can see it if you're in the bush or in the field. It's like, well, there it is. It just stands out, looks strong, looks powerful, beautiful. The danger would be we'd say, well, I'm going to come back tomorrow and uh, you know, gather our friends. We'll come back and we'll take some pictures of this. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll hang out here all the time. We'll build a cabin here or something like that. Here's the problem. And he says... Something that the need to know information would be this, this flower's not going to last. He says in verse 11, it's not really as awesome as you think as far as stability and lasting and eternity goes. This flower, something's going to happen. He says, verse 11, for the sun rises and it's scorched with a scorching heat and withers the grass. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. This flower's not going to last is what he's saying. Strength that it may have, beauty that it has, is just going to wither and fall. Petals are going to fall off. It's eventually just going to look like the rest of the grass. And he says in verse 11, he says, So also, and you can see it there, he says, So also will the rich man fade away. 
So there's two things he said about the rich man. Maybe you've noticed. Verse 10. First of all, he says, pass away. The rich man will pass away. The idea of like, you ever drove through like a um, small town? Maybe you like nodded off for a second and you're like, hey, we, did we just pass that town? You missed it. You just passed by it. The idea is just, it's gone. So, so the rich man's going to just pass by and be gone. Here one day, gone the next. And then also fade away, he says. This like process, this slow process of it just eventually gone. So the question is, again, like, is it wrong to be rich? Is it wrong to have money? No. So many of us are like, sweet. <laughs> I'm like, that's so good that it's not wrong to be rich. But we see the problem in it. The rich person, if that's the character of your life, your pursuit, and even as a believer, if you're off and now your pursuit is that, you will pass away here and gone. You will fade away. Your beauty, what you think is strong, will just eventually go away. It will fade away, and then notice what he says there. Not just fade away, not just pass away, but look where. In the midst of his pursuits. It's the pursuit of riches that's the problem. And again, our pursuit must be in something better. And I'm not saying, you know, if you're a businessman, don't try to find a business deal. And in that sense, I guess, you know, you're trying to get riches. I'm not saying even that's wrong. It's the pursuit of it, though. And he says you will die in the pursuit of what you're going after. The character of your life is seen maybe even in Matthew 6. We went through the Beatitudes, Sermon on the Mount. Um, Jesus' longest recorded sermon that we have. And Christ himself, he said this. Matthew 6, verse 33, he said, seek first. And this is the... That's a big word because we tend to seek riches first because nothing's wrong with riches and we don't realize that we're consumed with it. But he says, no, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Everything that you need, including food and water, will be just additions to it. He says, seek first the kingdom The rich will fade away in the midst of his pursuits. Why is it in the midst of his pursuits? I think it's for a couple reasons. It's in the midst of those pursuits because no one ever arrives. Going after riches, no one's like, hey, what's that guy doing? Like, even even the pursuit of, like, retirement, which is... In a sense, it's like another sermon. It's such a strange idea anyhow. And depending on how you define that, it's so wrong. Well, they've arrived then, and now they're, well, they're in glory. Even there, they're still pursuing, how do I keep spending this money? How do I keep uh, this holiday going forever? The pursuit never ends. So that's why you fade away in the midst of it. You never arrive. And then also because the rich will be surprised when their time comes. In the midst of it, taken away. We hear about the rich fool in Luke 12, and again, the word is just peppered with, so full of parables and descriptions and warnings of those who are rich. And the rich fool, he says, I will say to my soul, which is such an interesting thing, it's like, soul, let me say something to you. (laughs) Soul, You have, like, so this is who you are, like, man, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. Sounds like a good retirement. Verse 20, but God said to him, fool, this night your soul is required of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich Toward God. So some questions as we close. What are you pursuing? I think it's a good question to ask from the text then. In the midst of your pursuit, what would that look like then? What are you pursuing? Would it be God? Or if you're honest, your thoughts, your emotions, the things that keep you up at night, is about maybe retirement or it's before that. 
It's about the paycheck. Or are you even using, if you are rich, are you using what you have to invest in the things that will last forever? Uh, maybe a home, and I was talking about this with some friends the other day. You know, it's interesting. The home shows are always like uh, practice. Uh, well, they don't say practice. They say you have a home for entertaining. Or are you using your home, yeah, for entertaining? Like, look at, look at this. Look at me. I hope you had a great time. Or is it using your riches, your home, a roof over your head for hospitality? There's a big difference. Are you using it to serve the kingdom of God? So then again, if you are boasting in what lasts, how do you handle losing what doesn't last? You'd say, yes, I am boasting in what is lasting. So let me tell you then, all the things we have in this life aren't going to last. Hey, like these things we purchase with money. How do you handle losing them? And, and, and some of these things, you, you lose a life's worth of investments. It would be crushing. How do you handle it? How would you handle it? How are you handling it? Whether it's clothes or, like I said, vehicles or savings, inheritance. Do you worry about what you do have? Do you have it hidden under the mattress, so to speak, and you, you think about it all the time? If you're boasting at what lasts, then, then it should change how you handle when you lose what doesn't last. Are you fighting to keep things from passing away and fading away? Or as they pass away and fade away, are you boasting in what never fades away and never passes away? Like with, within your humility, within your humble state, are you bragging about that? What comes out of your mouth? Or is it just complaining about, man, I, I'm trying so hard to keep these things from passing away and fading away. It's like, hang on. Boast in your exaltation. Not complain about what you're losing. And again, I'm not saying that it's like good to lose it or not a big deal or not life-altering. And this is why the command means so much because the gospel is so much better. So we're commanded to boast. So finally, are you boasting in better riches? If you were poor or I would say in a, in a season of poverty, do you boast about your adoption, about your debt being paid, about being forgiven, justified, righteous, set apart, that you have God. And if you have God, if you're in Christ, you have God, you are rich. We are the richest people ever. You cannot get any richer than that. Do you boast about that? Do you let that simmer and think on it? Now, if you were rich or in a season of riches at some level, do you boast about having nothing of your own? Nothing to offer, and even just the, the foolishness of that penny. Do you boast about God's mercy and grace, gifts given to you, and, and things that should have been given to you that, that you didn't get? In both cases, are you boasting in what lasts? So let me pray for us in, in light of this, in light of the text. Just ask the Lord to, to apply this to our lives today. As a church, so let me pray for you. And then uh, again, I think such a fitting song for us to close in in worship. So let me pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we um, have had this time that I have had, even as a preacher, this time to be under your word. Lord, would you change our hearts? Lord, would you cause us to see what is true and what is a lie? Lord, that our boasting would change, Lord, would be in like our language that people would say, like, oh, he's going on again about it. There he goes, you know, taking pride in it or boasting about it. And it would be about the gospel. It would be about, and I don't have these things. This is my great deficit. And, Lord, it would be about even in the poverty. No, I am rich. Let me tell you. And, and Father, for, for us where that hasn't been the case and we've just kind of forgotten or we just get sidetracked and we get so distracted by, man, this is fading away and it's passing away and we're just fighting to try to keep it all going. Lord, forgive us and, and would we take great pleasure and delight and pride in what we have in Christ? Would we be a church that boasts about the gospel in our riches and in our poverty? 
Lord, would we trust you in it? Not just trying to fight to get out of it. We would trust you in it, and would you be glorified through it, Lord? We pray this. I ask, would you apply your word now by your spirit? And Father, help us now as a church to, to worship you. It's so right that we worship you in the name of Christ, uh, in song, Lord, that we'd sing so that we hear one another singing, encouraging each other with these words. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.